Fuel your body, your mind, your spirit creates the lifestyle you live. So the goal of the drive is to bring you great people, places, organizations, and ideas that move you forward. So to better fuel your mind, body, spirit, and create a better life. Uh, we always start off with a mindful minute with Denise. So this morning on the way in, I heard that Twitter went down and everybody was just crazy over that. And what I say to that is there's so many other platforms out there. Don't let something like that wreck your day or throw you off track. Either wait and be patient and take it as a sign that maybe you were supposed to take a break or jump on another platform. Um, and second to that is I like old school paper plans. When in doubt, write it down. Writing it down helps you not only give it energy and move it forward, it helps you remember. And of course for that, I like my daily drive and agenda for your mind, body, spirit, and lifestyle that you can find on Amazon. Oh, there's a picture of it right there. Uh, of course, by yours truly, Denise DiGregoli. So thanks so much for joining us. We're on week two of last week we had Carol with Creative Resolutions and we're moving forward today with a talk about innovation, great ideas, entrepreneurship, and we've got an incredible guest on from the Westport Public Library, Alex Giannini. Welcome, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad that you were here. We've got so much to talk about today regarding, well, you brought a whole bunch of creative I stuff. I did bring a lot of stuff. But I want the people to understand what the maker space is at the Westport Library mm -hmm. and how important it is to, you know, I think it's one of the most premier maker spaces in the country. It is. So it's a huge resource here in Connecticut. Yeah, Tell us about it. Well, I can't take any credit for it. Um, it was instituted before I got there. It was about four or five years ago. Uh -huh. uh, there was a grant from the, uh, the IMLS, uh, which is a, a library service grant, um, to put in a makerspace. Mm -hmm. uh, and essentially what a makerspace is, and the definition changes depending on who you ask, but it's a place for the community to come in, create things, mm -hmm. um, kind of tinker, play around with stuff, and, and um, in our makerspace, we have, as I said, we're in our fifth year of the makerspace now, and we have uh, 16 3D printers. Uh, wow. from from lower level 3D printers all the way up to an industrial industrial grade 3D printer that's used to prototype inventions. Uh, we have 3D scanners. We have robots. We have coding classes. Um, we have we have a lot of toys. Um, but, but what makes your your makerspace premier? Like, why are other people sort of copying some of the stuff you do there? Sure. Well, my, my former boss was the uh, the director of innovation at the Westport Library. His name's Bill Derry. Uh, he retired in October. Great guy. We met him. My yeah. daughter took a class there. Oh, cool. There. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, everybody, the, the story with Bill is that. It's always, whenever Great I bring guy. up his name, everyone knows who he is. And, and I think that's, I mean, the spirit of Bill is kind of inside the makerspace. You know, he's, he's uh, he, 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 he loves forward thinking and he loves innovation uh, and he's just enthusiastic about making stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so our, our makerspace is, is literally um, from age six to age 90. Uh, we have had, we have had six-year-olds print. We've had a, a 12-year-old teach a, an 85-year-old to, to print on the 3D printer. Uh, we're all inclusive. Uh, and we have some of the most cutting edge technology out there, including uh, an Oculus Rift. Um, Which we're going to go through all these little pieces yeah, and parts yeah. as we go forward today. So as the manager of digital experience, and now I think you're sort of spearheading the makerspace, mm -hmm. We were going to talk about our friend Nancy over here, yes. which is one of the premier features at the Makerspace. But Nancy had a little bit of a tumble. She did. She, so she's a little out of commission for this show. Mm -hmm. But tell me about Nancy and what she does and so, why she's so important to the community. So Nancy is uh, a one of two NOW robots, NAO robots, from the, uh, the French company Aldebaran. Mm -hmm. um, we were lucky enough to get um, three uh, private family foundations came to us uh, about two years ago uh, with such a generous offer, and, and uh, they gave us money essentially to, uh, you know, they didn't say to, to buy something specific. They, they came to us and said, we want you to invest this money into the next big thing. And we all agreed that the next big thing was robotics and coding. Um, I think uh, coding especially more and more is becoming um, Coding for what? Computer, Certainly not co computer pro okay. uh, co coding, um, and it's it's kind of becoming the second language. Um, and, and is this for all ages? You're teaching coding. It it is uh, in our community, especially. There was a demand for uh, for more coding classes. We we we've done things like uh, scratch programming, which is kind of a, a building blocks coding program, um, and, and that we start very young. Uh, we've done some higher level stuff, but we thought the robots were the perfect entryway for for all ages. Um, mm -hmm. 
and we, we debuted them at um, Star, Wars Reads, Star Wars Reads Day in 2014 uh -huh. in front of a, a packed house at the Westport Library. Um, we had some mechanical issues with the robots that day. Uh, later it turned out to be user error, okay. which it usually does, but uh, we always say in the makerspace and, and kind of in the library in general, it's, uh, you know, we can guarantee failure in our makerspace. And, and one of the key components of making and, and experimenting and tinkering is failing. Right. You never find the good stuff unless you get through the bad stuff. Um, and uh, Nancy fell today, but um, that's okay because, as I said, it's it's something you kind of expect that with new. Well, now we need to have you back when Nancy's repaired, so that Absolutely. we can see what she does. But other than teaching coding, what else would she do? Well, I think her, her primary function was to teach coding. So we we, we uh, created a curriculum, a three course cr curriculum around. Um, the, they, they come with software called Choreograph, and it's proprietary software, oh. and it's a very it's a building blocks coding software. So if you there are boxes and strings, and if you move a box in that that says hello, the robot will wave, and, and you can program the robot to say something and to wave and to, to make certain movements. Um, so in that way, it's kind of an instant gratification way to, to learn coding. Yeah. But you also kind of learn the basics of coding. Mm -hmm. Now underneath that uh, that software is is um, Python, and Python mm -hmm. is the language that a lot of people use to you know create websites create these, um, games and, and, and things like that and what uh, you know if 90% of the people that took the the robot classes wanted to learn kind of the basics there was that 10% who wanted to go further and, and learn Python coding. Which we th I thought was interesting because when we talked before the mm -hmm. show you said it was important for people that were changing their careers mm -hmm. and responding to what was going on in the job marketplace and there was this huge amount of people that wanted to learn more about coding yeah and you saw it as a way not only to provide entrepreneurial service but mm -hmm. maybe job changing services which I thought was a unique and very important approach we, we got different levels of people coming into I mean there there was there was, sometimes we'd get the grandparent who wanted to show their grandkids in Florida that you know look at me I'm, I'm programming a robot and yeah. you know how cool is this um, to you know the the kids who just wanted to play with the robot um, but we did have the professionals who um, you know, they want to take their skills to a different level. Right. Um, and they really got into the software and they got underneath the software and they started creating uh, more intricate programs for the robots. So I guess the message on the drive is you're never too old and it's never too late. And if you look around, there's a community of resources right in our backyard mm -hmm. that's pretty astounding. Absolutely. So moving right along, tell mm -hmm. me about this incredible 3D printing that we see. Because sure. I know you do it on a commercial level for mm -hmm. professionals as well as the public at large. Yeah, so I, I brought a couple of examples. Um, inside the Makerspace you'll see, you'll see quite a few things. Um, the thing that most people know about Makerspaces, especially in, in libraries, uh, are the 3D printers. Uh, and we have some entry-level 3D printers. We have three uh, MakerBot Replicator 2s. Uh, MakerBot's a very uh, famous company uh, uh, with the 3D printers. And they're kind of the gateway into making for us. So we teach classes um, in order to use a 3D printer, you need to take uh, two hours worth of training on the printers. Ava did that. It was great. Oh, cool. Yeah, and we, yeah. we, we kind of, we go as young as eight, although if you have a parent, we can go younger than that. Um, but the, the coolest thing for me uh, about the makerspace is that the coaches, for the most part, are middle school kids. Yeah, they're pretty you know, crazy. And they, yeah, pretty, so it's, pretty, it's, it's nice that they connect. Yeah, it's and they, it's intergenerational. So you know, like as I said, you'll have uh, the young teaching the old, and, and vice versa. So on those kind of the uh, the entry level printers, this is an example of something that would be on the uh, the MakerBot. So it's a little lower quality. Um, it's typically stuff that can be printed in a couple of hours because that's if you come in, you you sign up, you take um, a class. So it's a filament. It's an interesting filament in that because machine. It's, plastic, yep. it's a plastic filament. Um, not to get into the particulars of how this happens because we want mm -hmm. people to go to MakerBot, but um, do you need experience other than the two hours? No, not at all. Um, we are, you send a, uh, an email. You can go on our website, westportlibrary.org, and send an email to, uh, to the Makerspace, uh, and we will schedule you. Uh, we're open seven days a week. We'll schedule you for your first one-hour lesson, mm -hmm. and you'll sit down and learn pretty much everything you need to know to, to, know to get started. Uh, you'll come in for a second hour class just to kind of refresh the first hour and go a little bit deeper. Uh, but then after that, you're free to use the printers. You, you, you schedule with us, but you get two hours at a time. Um, so I was traveling back uh, from a business trip out, mm -hmm. out in the Midwest, and I saw in a magazine that someone used one of these 3D printers to make a dress. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Um, it's not. Uh, it, it, that's a different kind of printer. But that's they're, they're, we're, try, we're getting into. I mean, the, the the 3D printers that I've seen now, the fabric printers are unbelievable. There are 3D printers that print in metals. Um, they're 
a lot more expensive and kind of just brand new right now. So um, how are the inventors in the area coming in and figuring, yeah, so, like, what are these inventors doing? So if the MakerBots are kind of the, the, the lowest level uh, yeah. of quality that we have in the, in the, um, in the makerspace, we have a, a machine called the U-Print. And that's an industrial quality printer, uh, and that's where things like like the giraffe and the Eiffel Tower come in, and and, and this piece, which is much more intricate, much more detailed, it's sturdier than the. Uh, wow, so they're it's actually almost moving, like a Rubik's cube. Exactly, they're moving parts to it. Um, wow. So we have inventors on a on a pretty daily basis. Uh, local inventors, or local are they coming all, they, from all over? They can come, uh, you know, from. Uh, I think the furthest one right now is is in Bridgeport, um, but they come in. Uh, they'll they'll send an email with uh, it's called an STL file, um, and you know they're prototyping designs for inventions that they're creating, uh, and we'll for for a very small fee, it's ten dollars per cubic inch. Uh, we will will print for them. So they you, you these inventors just send us a file, uh, we put it in our system and we print it out. And typically, I mean something like this is so intricate, the, the print could take. Uh, 12 to 15 hours. Wow. You know, we leave them running overnight, um, and then we soak it in a, uh, a solution, in a, in a bath, to, to get rid of, to, to make it, to smooth it out, and to get the plastic the way that we want it. And then uh, they come in, they and they, they pick up their part. So this is a center, obviously, clearly not for just children. You've uh, got, absolutely. And you said Bridgeport, so people from other communities can yep. come to the makerspace other than just Westport. Is yep. that correct? They, we, so all of our um, the the maker bots are all of that is free to Westport residents. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not from Westport, there's a small charge of ten dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Or but what usually happens if people come in from other communities, they tend to become coaches mm -hmm. uh, because coaches get to print for free, mm -hmm. and that's what we encourage. We have we the makerspace. Uh, I'm, I'm in charge of the makerspace, but um, there, there, we have two other staff members uh, with me and a community of volunteers that, that, that keeps the makerspace buzzing all well, day, Well, even for day. $10, I mean, that's a very nominal fee. Where can you go and learn something for $10? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, okay, yes, I encourage people to volunteer, too. It's much more important to kind of exchange that. Yeah, energy. and it's more fun that way, yeah, I think. it's more fun. Okay, so moving right along, sure. what else do you have to um, show us about so innovation? Just, yeah, staying with the 3D printing uh, theme, I guess, I'm going to show you guys. This is called a Sense Scanner. Um, and the reason I brought this today is because we, we just got a really interesting... Pr so the, you, you, scan, you plug this in and, and you take a 3D image of an object. So we have the, uh, the Staples, the easy button. So we took a, a 3D scan of, of the object and then saved it as a, an STL file and printed it out on one of the MakerBots. So we wow. reproduced it. Now it's a lower quality reproduction just for demonstration purposes. Right. Um, but in a, it's a real world application. Although so if I scanned myself, we could make a 3D we, model we've of done me. that. We have done that many times. <laughs> I was going to say, in a, it, a real world kind of application of it. Uh -huh. I, a, a, a gentleman came in last week. Um, with a very cool project for us. He, he uh, dresses up for, it, it's the 501st Legion, and they're Star Wars cosplayers. Oh. Uh, and they have these very intricate, they do tons of charity work in Connecticut. Uh, they're really great guys. They have these very intricate uh, Star Wars character costumes. We're scanning piece by piece his Boba Fett costume so that he has a, uh, a 3D, a, a digital version. In case a piece breaks off, he can he can print oh, out, he can 3D print a piece. So it is quite a resource. And when we come back from our short break here, I want to know just a little bit more about that scanner. And as we move into what a great resource it can be, if you're an innovator or an entrepreneur. And then I want people to know a little bit more about your authorship. You've got a book and a Kickstarter campaign, and that's very entrepreneur. So stay right back. Stay right back. Stay, <laughs> stay right with us, guys. We'll be back in about two minutes. It's Denise T. Regoli with The Drive Tuesday here on HAN Network. Thanks for tuning in. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com.
It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first. A place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where automation will never replace consideration. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. It's the new year. The to-do list is long and it's easy to feel pulled in many directions at once. Your professional, personal shoppers at Walter Stewart's are ready to check groceries off your list by shopping for you. Save extra time this year and spend it doing more important things. Great food and wine delivered to your home with the same day service. Shop Stewart's online at stewartsmarket.com. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate. We're back. The Drive every Tuesday with Denise DiGregoli. And why should you tune in every Tuesday? Because we've got something new to move you forward in your mind, body, spirit to create a better lifestyle. Today we have Alex Giannini from the Westport Library and the Makerspace, mm -hmm. which is one of the premier makerspaces in the country. And we're talking about how it's such a valuable resource to our community for inventors, innovators, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, and the public at large. And we were just finishing up with that scanner. Yeah. I had a couple questions about that scanner. Sure. So do you, how do you need to know how to use that scanner? Is it expensive? Is it, you know, where do we find it? One is it only at the library? It's, I'm sure it's other places, but um, at the library it's free, which is always, yeah, free uh, is good. Which is always good. Um, and we have such knowledgeable people in the library, be them uh, staff members or uh, volunteers. And, and they're there because they, they love making, but they also love uh, the community aspect of it. They love to teach. So um, when you scan with this doohickey, does it make an STL file or whatever that it, file? Yeah, it will make an STL file. And but it's, will it make a JPEG? It can. Yeah, okay. you can save it in a bunch of different formats. The the um, It's not as simple as, you know, like a Star Wars thing where you take a photo and it's, <laughs> it's, it's there. You have to actually stay with it, and it, it, it's a process. Um, so but we will teach you how to use it if you come into to the makerspace. We'd be happy to show you. But you have something else that's pretty cool, this tech help. Mm -hmm. yeah, Tell me we, about tech help. So uh, it's... it's Kind of a correlation to the makerspace, but on uh, on Tuesdays and Fridays at the Westport Library uh, in the afternoons we offer um, tech help for an hour and a half, where uh, patrons anyone can come in for free, no matter where you're from. You can come in with a gadget or a device. Even your iPhone, you guys. Can, absolutely, especially your iPhone. If, yeah. you, if you have a problem with with something and you're just not sure uh, how to fix it. So it's it like an open forum. Just it is come an open in and forum. learn. Yep. If you're technically challenged, there'll be like some cool Even, cats there to. Absolutely, and yeah. and you know we have a couple staff members that run it, and uh, twelve year old kids that are incredibly knowledgeable. So what time is it on Tuesdays? Uh, on Tuesdays it is four to six. So you tune into the drive and then you go over there and you are all set. Yep, and on Fridays it's three to five. Fridays even better, right yeah. before you go out to dinner. Yep, and one of the, the one of the newer things that we have, it's, it's, a, it's a series of classes called the Anyone Can Use uh -huh. uh, classes. Uh, and they're every Friday at 11 o'clock. Uh, you can go on our website and register because they do tend to fill up pretty quickly. Um, but we teach a bunch of different things. Anyone can use uh, Facebook. Anyone can use Microsoft Word. Um, uh -huh. So we, they're basically introductory one-on-one classes for a number of different um, applications. Uh, we're starting to get more into uh, social media. So we, we had a Twitter class, we had a, a Facebook class, we're going to have a Snapchat class, which I'm going to have to take because I don't get Snapchat. Mm -hmm. um, last Friday we did a SketchUp class, and SketchUp is 3D rendering software. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, and you can you can design something in... in it seems very entrepreneurial. Absolutely. Class. absolutely. And th that class was very focused. Um, the, the group was uh, professionals seeking to kind of further their skills. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when is this? Fridays at 11? Fridays at 11 a.m. at the Westport Library. Now, does it change, or you say, I want to come in for a SketchUp class? Or is uh, it so we have a schedule on, on the website, uh, okay. westportlibrary.org. Um, and we update, so the classes run for about two months, and every week it's a different class, but mm. every series we, we try to change it up. 
Quite so some bit. of my entrepreneurial friends that are always asking about social media and how to do it, I'm going to point you right in the direction of the Westport mm -hmm. Library website because that's a great jumping platform just to get your feet wet, yeah, so we to speak. We, we actually, uh, and you know, the, the classes, because they're, they're limited to 10 people, uh -huh. uh, so they're, they're kind of a general introduction, but because they're small classes, they end up becoming kind of hyper-focused. So right. we had an author specifically asking, um, you know, how do I, I, I just published a book, uh -huh. what do I do? You know, how, how do I get the word out on, on social media? And, and, you know, we were able to help her uh, follow the, the, the right people that would, you know, maybe follow her back and kind of get her message out to as many people as possible. And now she tweets quite a bit. Well, wow, that is just incredible. Okay, so moving right along, mm -hmm. there's this really cool gadget I want everyone to see, yeah. the cardboard. Yes, yeah, so one of the, um, one of the newest things we have in the, uh, the, the makerspace is, I'll start here, with the Oculus Rift. And Oculus is, uh, this is the Oculus Rift headset. Uh, yeah. Oculus has been in uh, the news quite a bit lately because they've just announced a consumer model. This is, a, uh, this is the last developer's kit. Um, so this, they're not making this one anymore. Uh, as of, I think, June, the, the con consumer model goes on sale. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have this at the Westport well, Library. what is this? This is a virtual reality headset. And why would I use it? Uh, because you're crazy. No, yeah, um, yeah, well, I am crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so the Oculus, right now, the, we, we use it because it is, it, it's an incredible piece of technology. Mm -hmm. So when you, if you were to put this on your head and, and, and plug it into a computer that has the computing power to, uh, it, we, we actually, so we got the Oculus, we, we got this developer's kit, um, and we thought, look at us, we have a, uh, a very cool new tech gadget that everyone's gonna wanna use. Mm -hmm. uh, and we went to, to use it and we realized that we did not have a computer that could handle the graphics mm -hmm. uh, that are required for the Oculus. So one of our Makerspace volunteers, his name is Nate Allen, he's an 18 year old uh, high school student. Um, he said, well, I build gaming computers. Gaming computers have the cards that are uh, uh, um, powerful enough this, to, yeah. to handle the graphics. Uh, so Nate um, ordered all the parts for us and built a gaming computer on the, right in the, the makerspace of the library. Uh, and now we plug the, the Oculus into the, the gaming computer and we do demonstrations of, they have a bunch of different um, demos right now. They're, they're, you could take a virtual reality uh, roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. um, and when he says virtual reality, we, we experience this at the um, motion picture mm -hmm. Um, image of Motion Picture Museum in Brooklyn. I'm not saying the name correct, so I'm sorry. But anyways, um, for those of you that are my age, not his, uh, this you put this on and you, you take an incredible tour of whatever the environment mm -hmm. is in a very three-dimensional, like you are there right in the middle of it, front, r back, center, yeah. well, left. Well, that, that's the, the, yeah. the cool thing about the Oculus is that it, it renders the 3D world as you move around. Yeah. So your head just moves incredible. and it, it, you can look behind you and it renders the world behind you as well. And I work for a few clients that I do consulting for trade shows mm -hmm. and events, and this technology is very, very big in yeah. trade shows and events. We could pr provide such an experience. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, you can you literally can walk in someone else's shoes. Um, I know there was one, uh, an instance of, and I don't remember if it was Oculus, uh, the, the people that created Oculus or, or another organization, but they they filmed the, the journey of a young girl in, in Africa who, it, you know, they, using three uh, 360 degree cameras, they filmed her journey just to get water on a daily basis. And they, um, they put it in the Oculus and, and gave it to congressmen and they were able to see what it takes to get clean water in this wow. little village. So there, I mean, there are some really cool- Some really practical, important Absolutely, yeah, and, and I mean, one of the other things that we've seen at the library is real estate agents, uh, virtual tours of, of uh, real estate properties. Obviously you can do that online, it's a different, it's a whole different beast when you're on, in the Oculus. Can you, you imagine like if you go house. to the real estate office one day and you just sit down yeah. and take a look before you even go? Yeah. Well, so the possibilities are endless, especially Absolutely. if yeah. you've got an Yeah, and, and, and I think the question we get more, more than anything, I mean, we would get the question with the robot, why do you guys have a robot at the library? That question was answered very quickly after 2,000 people came in to be trained on the, the coding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I so guess the results are in the numbers. Absolutely, and, yeah. and with the Oculus, because it does have a video game bent to it, you know, it's, well, why do you guys have this? And I think, you know, a lot of the jobs today are going that way. Oh, um, for sure. And Absolutely. when I was a kid playing video games, I never once thought I could be involved in making this. I mean, that's, that's what the, 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 the makerspace volunteers that we get that want to use the Oculus, they're video game developers, you know, and they're just starting their careers. And where, coming, the, where is this young gentleman that did your video gaming computer, where did he get his training? Is he going to school self -taught, locally? Self-taught, self-taught. Yeah, and he, he's, uh, he's a, homeschooled, a homeschooled student from Fairfield. Uh -huh. um, he's going to start college next year. Um, and he, he's just, he's always had um, 
away with devices, and he, he's uh, especially video gaming. He, he's very big on uh, the community aspects of video gaming, mm, uh, and you, you talk to him about it, and, and he'll he'll make you a believer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he's and one of the things I think that he's gotten out of it, he's given us so much, mm -hmm. but I think he's been able to teach people, you know, and yeah. that that's been a big thing for him. And in November, um, Barnes and Noble had a Maker Fair. Uh, it was their first ever Maker Fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and every store in North America had a Maker Fair. So when the, the store in Westport call, contacted the Westport Library, and uh, we've put on four Maker Fairs. I know, your Maker Fairs are uh, outstanding. Yeah, we're, so we're gearing up for our fifth Maker Fair, which is on Saturday, April 30th. Um, last year we had 6,500 people. This year we are planning for 10,000. Um, so, which would make it, it's already the biggest one day event in, in Westport. Um, wow. But we're, we're really excited because we have makers and inventors and tinkerers and, and just brilliant people from all over the world coming to, to display their stuff at our Maker Faire. Um, and anyway, back to the Barnes & Noble one, Nate, who, who built the gaming computer, stood with the Oculus and did demonstrations for a hundred people over two days just to try out the Oculus. And it was a very, just a very cool thing because you had people of all ages trying out this new technology that maybe they wouldn't be able to try out That's a whole lot else. of self-esteem spreading around there, right? Yeah, Positive absolutely. Energy, people are connecting and absolutely. certainly this young person being supported. There's nothing better than knowing something and being able to pass that on. I mean, yeah. teaching and, and coaching is a, it's a gift. And I think that um, Nate in particular has found that this is probably his gift. You know, he's very good with people and, wow. and uh, it's, it's been great so far. Makes you want to go to the maker space like right now. So I hope what so. What is this? What is so, this cool gadget? Well, if you don't have uh, Oculus, the, the buy-in for the new Oculus at the consumer level is quite a bit of money because, like I said, you need that computer. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, So if you please. if you don't have that, you can most likely afford a piece of cardboard. Yeah, I and think we can do And this is uh, Google Cardboard. Uh, it is t <laughs> the best alternative I can imagine uh, to to the Oculus Rift, and it is exactly what it says it is. It's cardboard, cardboard box with lenses inside. You stick. But can I see the lenses sure, sure. before we put anything in? So are they glass? Oh, they're glass. Yeah. They're glass lenses. They're probably lenses. plastic lenses, but yeah. All right, they feel glass, oh. but okay, maybe. And for Pretty pretty easy, pretty yeah. Okay. Yep, and you can construct them you can make there are things online where you can go on and, and make your own or make you can buy own. I think these were 4.99. So <laughs> we we have a bunch of these in the makerspace. Um, and you download the Google Cardboard app, which is a free download on the iPhone or on an Android. You put your phone right in here. Of course, this is for the i5. This is the 5, yeah. yeah. I didn't, Not the they, i6. They do make it for the 6. Oh, they do. And okay. they make the cardboard larger for the 6. And the, we have uh, a bunch of different size cardboard for dis okay. different size phones. Perfect. And this piece here is just a little magnetic strip, and this will actually change your... Your, the image that you're seeing. This is kind of how you guide through the uh, the cardboard, like on the old viewfinders. Okay, so if let you me put that up to this. the. Oh yeah, so I'm inside the Museum of Natural History, looking at the dinosaurs. Yep, and as you move your head, the world kind of generates around you. So it's a very. Wow, that is this sort of real time, or is this like a video stuck somewhere that I'm it, kind of watching? It's a video stuck somewhere. Very interesting. Yeah. So if you couldn't get into the museum, you certainly could get a first-hand look. Absolutely. I mean, it's 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 such a cool way to kind of bring you, whatever you have. You can bring it to everybody kind of through this virtual reality. So kind of thinking it through, if you were <laughs> a entrepreneur, whether it be a real estate or even in my husband's business, art and interiors. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could do so much with this kind of technology. Absolutely. I just need a young person on staff to get it going. Mm. Well, or you could just come to Westport Library. <laughs> All right, we're going to start right the maker into the makerspace. Maker That's yeah. right. I'm going to put them right over there. <laughs> on that note, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more innovation. And we're going to talk about a, being a real entrepreneur in a Kickstarter uh, program that led to a lot of success. It's Denise with The Drive. Thanks for tuning in every Tuesday here on HN Network. Denali is your outdoor retail destination in the Westfield Trumbull Mall. For the last 21 years, we have carefully selected clothing, footwear, and gear from a variety of the best outdoor brands, such as the North Face, Patagonia, Vineyard Vines, Ugg, Merrill, GoPro, New Balance, and many more. Our stores have a friendly, knowledgeable staff to help you with all of your running, hiking, and cold weather needs, and in discovering all things outdoorsy and awesome. Visit us in the Westfield Trumbull Mall or online at DenaliOutdoor.com. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. 
I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. Tired of all the bull? Relax and enjoy the experience of buying a car at Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. No bull allowed. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Want to learn how sponsored content can help your business? Let the HAN Network help. First of all, what is sponsored content? Well, it's a story, video, or other content compelling enough for folks to want to read it, view it, or interact with it, and it's sponsored by a business. We create this kind of content for clients all the time. We build an interesting story or video that carefully weaves your business's brand into the narrative. It might be a story about how the condominium law in New York State makes property taxes on condos much lower than in Connecticut. The sponsor is a condo developer in Westchester, New York. Or a video explaining the European roots of a cafe and yoga studio in Wilton. Or talking about the history of a brand, product, or store while showing its modern day incarnation. or even a poll that asks readers to answer a question that leads them to your brand. Let the HAN Network Content Studio build a story around your business. Welcome back, it's Denise DiGregoli Live every Tuesday here on the HAN Network with a show called The Drive. The Drive is about all things that move you forward. How you fuel your mind, body, spirit creates the life you live. And I always look for people that are interesting ideas, organizations that move us forward. Today we've been talking about um, the makerspace at the Westport Library with Alex Giannini. And he has not only a creative background, but he has been in the publishing industry mm -hmm. for a long time. And he was entrepreneurial enough to embark on his own Kickstarter program and self-publish a book. So I want to talk a little bit about that and the ingenuity behind that. Tell me about what made you even want to write this book? Sure. Well, I, when I graduated college, I went into publishing uh, and kind of jumped between publishers as, as the industry had some ups and downs uh, uh -huh. <laughs> in those years. Um, but I, I kind of, I started from the very bottom and, and kind of worked my way up as I went. Uh, so I worked in every facet of the publishing industry because I, I worked at small houses for the most part. Uh, so you learn to kind of do everything. Uh -huh. um, and from there I went, I, I really wanted to learn a more digital bent. Uh, so I, I worked for uh, WWE.com in Stanford uh, to kind of learn a, um, a content management system to, to, you know, as I said, to, to go a little bit more digital. Um, but during that time, I really wanted to do something. My, my love has always been books, and, and I've always wanted to write. And at WWE, I wrote every day for the website and for a couple of their YouTube shows. Um, and it kind of, you know, this is some, this, this idea, Sarah Fair in the House at the End of the World, was an idea I had. Um, and I, I always had an artist in mind, because I, I followed her online and, and really enjoyed her stuff. Her name's Abigail Larson. You see um, this book, guys? It's really cool. I mean, I have an artistic background, so I have a, a, a different um, opinion maybe of art than, but yeah, okay, you're seeing the cover there. This is illustrated by Abigail Larson, and you found her online, I think you told me through Etsy? Uh, no, she was, she was on DeviantArt. Um, oh, DeviantArt. And uh, I saw her online por portfolio and then later her website and just loved her stuff. Um, and I wrote the story. Um, Kind of with her style in mind, yeah. Uh, and I remember emailing her sometime in 2012. Take another shot of that, Eric. Can you see? 
So it's kind of cool. What's the story about? So it's, it's about a little girl, uh, Sarah Fair, who goes off into the dark in search of her missing friend uh, on a Halloween night many years ago. Halloween, uh, my favorite holiday. Mine too, mine too. So I, it, it kind of incorporates all the things that I like. Um, and I, I wrote the, the manuscript and, and sent Abigail a, a, an email out of the blue asking her if she'd be interested in potentially illustrating it. And she was very, very busy at the time. And, and pretty much just said, no, I don't think I'm going to have time, but please feel free to, to send along the manuscript and uh, maybe I'll provide a cover or something. It's really um, cool art. And yeah, and about 45 minutes later, she'd read the manuscript and she'd set some time aside and she, uh, she decided to draw the book. That too. That's kind of cool. So we, we self-published yeah. in uh, 2012. Uh, we did a, a run of 500 copies and we were able to sell through by uh, hand selling to, to little bookstores, um, going to little shows, uh, and finally selling online. Um, and then, what do you sell online? Through Amazon or your own site? No, through my own site. I, we wanted to do everything the hard way, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we did. We sold 500 books through, like I said, hand selling. Um, and then in 2015, I was convinced finally to to do a Kickstarter uh -huh. to do a second print because people still wanted the book, and we really, I didn't have the the the, the money to uh, to print another one because the cost of printing had gone up yeah. quite a bit. In, yeah, in this the is three years with a jacket wrap and everything. Yeah, it's hard, Astra and a hardcover. It, it's it's the thing everyone tells you not to do in self-publishing: hardcover jacket, yeah. full full color. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so we, you know, I'd, I'd always been a little hesitant about crowdfunding because I thought, well, if you believe in it, you should be able to figure out a way to get the money mm -hmm. yourself, and, and which is what I did with the uh, the first printing. But um, it just wasn't going to happen, and you know, I wasn't going to be able to get the story out there anymore if if I didn't uh, go another route. And we did Kickstarter, uh, and we were fortunate enough to become a Kickstarter staff pick on our first day, um, and we raised. So we were, Kickstarter then endorsed you, so to speak. Yeah, yep. They they. Um, they made us a staff pick. They they put us kind of up front on the on the first day, and really by the second day we had a good feeling that we were going to make our goal, uh, and we did. We we reached our goal, and it's it's just been such a wonderful ride because it brought people in that I would have never been able well, to, that, to talk to. I want to know more about that. So you, it, it, that's a very entrepreneurial approach. You mm -hmm. you very grassroots. You develop the book. You find the artist. You find the resources. You make it happen. Mm -hmm. You hand deliver the books. And for people that have started their own business, you know how hard this is. And you know how you know you can be met with failure at every single sure, corner. Sure. Right? So there's a little bit of like stick to itness. We've just got to get back up and keep walking. There is, there, and there's you know you don't know what you don't know until you find out that you don't know yeah. it. Because I you know I figured I'd been in publishing for a while, so I I know what I'm doing, um, and it really. I proved every day that I didn't know what I was doing. And, and again, kind of like in the makerspace, you learn by making mistakes. You know, it's mm -hmm. the only way that you're going to improve sometimes is by making uh, mistakes. And going into the Kickstarter, I honestly looked at it what more. What is Kickstarter anyway? So Kickstarter is a, uh, it's the world's largest crowdfunding uh, website. And you, you put up a, uh, a project that you'd like to But are you like just to selling to your friends? That's my perception of it. Everyone says that, but then you get your first uh, backer from Norway and you go, <laughs> okay, <laughs> well... <laughs> This is this is pretty cool. Uh, you don't. Uh, what Kickst do they expect in, in exchange? The backer from Norway. Well, you need so with Kickstarter, there are different uh, levels of rewards for um, for people that pledge. So for us, if you gave fifteen dollars plus shipping, you got a book. Um, for a little bit more money, I don't remember the tiers because it's been a little while. But one of the other things we offered was one of the characters in the book is a bear. So on oh, yeah, Etsy, look at here he is on the back. Yeah. So on Etsy. I found her name is Southern Gothica on Etsy. She, these are hand-stitched little Thomas bears. Oh my! Um, and the, this very was one nicely of, and well made. Wow! Oh yeah, she's she's great. So this was one of the rewards for someone who gave a little bit more money. And at higher levels, uh, Abigail, the the illustrator, provided original art um, for for the uh, the person who pledged. So well, honestly, going into the Kickstarter, I I initially thought it's a good way to kind of. Um, get an idea if people so have an cool. interest. Isn't it cool? Yeah, yeah that bear and it's is all, very cool. All hand stitched, which is really cool. Talk so, about making. Uh, did someone at Kickstarter help you come up with the quote unquote rewards or did you sort no, of? No, it's all stuff that, I, and I did it, uh, you know, we, we looked at other Kickstarters that were successful and we looked at Kickstarters that were not successful to kind of see why. So you looked at what was good and what wasn't good. Exactly. And, yeah, and that's, 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 that's really also how. very entrepreneurial. Yeah, because I, I think, you, you know, sometimes the price points are a little bit too high and, you know, if you're, if you're too high with your initial price point and people don't get a reward, it's not, you know, it's just not going to work out. But I thought for the price of the book, they'd buy the book anyway. So if they wanted the book, set a reward level at the price of the book and they'll get a book. So and I again I ran into things that I did stupidly like flat rate shipping internationally and it's incredibly expensive to ship a book to Norway. It's not ten dollars. <laughs> um, so that hurt a little bit but yeah. you know you, you kinda you learn as you go. 
So also ask, ask questions and get people that are involved. Did anyone, as I told you when we talked on the phone, mm -hmm. I had taken a um, self-funding uh, seminar at an organizational expo I'd gone to that mm -hmm. was based on entrepreneurial women. And many of the things they talked about were these types of rewards and how to uh, create community and right. create momentum. And I thought that was very interesting, but until you really know someone that's done it mm -hmm. locally, you feel like it's not for you. Yeah. So what was it that threw you over the edge? Like what convinced you? I just think people, everyone kind of, we would sell the book at little uh, either comic conventions or little book conventions and everyone would say, you know, we want more of this. Mm. Um, and honestly, I went into it thinking, I, we're not gonna reach our goal, but what, what, what I'll find out is, are there enough people that are even a little bit interested in this idea? So and I are almost, they? They were, yeah, they were definitely, they, we reached our goal and went beyond our goal, actually. So what's up next for Sarah Fair? We were, uh, Abigail and I were lucky enough uh, this past year to sure uh, get signed by a, a literary agency, uh, Red Sofa Literary Agency. Did someone find you? Yeah, Brie Ogden is our, our agent, and she, uh, she reached out uh, to me through the Kickstarter. Um, and she'd known Abigail previously. Oh. Um, so we, now we have a, an agent, and we've fulfilled the, the Kickstarter books and, and the rewards, and now I'm sitting on quite a few books that I, I'm, hopefully we'll, we can sell the book to a larger publisher, oh. um, but we'll see what happens. Do we, do we want to give the website? Sure, it's, we, it's sarahfair.com. Uh, and sarahfair.com, um, and to follow you or be part of the Kickstarter? Oh, the Kickstarter is over, but they yeah, can okay. definitely kind of get some updates and see what's going on see what's uh, in going the Sarah Fair world. Yeah. So what would you say to anyone that has a full-time job mm -hmm. and ventures out on the road of entrepreneurial ship like this? Um, look at the rate of shipping things to Norway. That's the first <laughs> thing. Um, the second thing is, if, you, if you're hesitant about a Kickstarter, think of it uh, as a test audience. You know, TV uses test audiences to see if a show is going to be well received or not. Uh -huh. This is a great way to test the waters. It's free. You know, you set up, and if you're, if you're successful, Kickstarter takes a nominal fee afterwards, so you factor that into your your um, the, the amount that you're asking for. But what a great way to kind of get your thing out there to the world and let people, you know, see if let people decide if it's something that they want in the world. Did you look at any other programs other than Kickstarter? Um, for us, we knew Kickstarter was going to be the, the best way to go. Mm. Um, there are other ones like GoFundMe um, and... Uh, Moolah Hoop. Well, yeah, and Moolahoop. Patreon. Is a, Patreon is, a, is yeah. another one. Uh, but for us, we knew we, uh, we wanted to do the all or nothing approach with the Kickstarter. Wonderful. Um, so that's what we did. All right, I'm getting the signal that we have... This hour went by so quickly. <laughs> My gosh, we could go on and on. Okay, guys, we need to take a quick break here. We're going to come back and wrap it up. Please join us every Tuesday and tell your friends. And if you'd like to be a guest on The Drive, you can email me at, uh, where can they email me? Here at hand? <laughs> I don't know. Denise at denisedegrigley.com. Let's start with that. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in. At Innovative Health and Rehabilitation, we provide an advanced level of care to resolve symptoms and minimize recurrence. Our experienced professional staff design and implement effective plans to return individuals to their prior level of function. We specialize in the treatment of orthopedic and sports injuries, pre-post surgical rehabilitation, performance enhancement, strength and conditioning, vestibular rehabilitation, balance and gait training. A convenient location and flexible scheduling is available to accommodate your needs. We look forward to providing you with a comprehensive level of care to meet your rehabilitation goals. We are also affiliated with three high schools, Norwalk, West Hill, and Stanford. Our certified athletic trainers cover the athletic events at the high schools to prevent, treat, and educate student athletes and injuries. Our certified athletic trainers also take part in the New Canaan Youth Football Program. Reach us at 650 West Avenue in Norwalk. Call us at 203-852-9903. Innovative Health and Rehabilitation. Healthy, confident smiles begin at Stratford Orthodontics. Conveniently located on Main Street, we are Stratford's hometown orthodontist. We offer the latest in orthodontic technology, including Damon braces and Invisalign. We always accept new patients. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation, 203-375-8332, Stratford Orthodontics, 2499 Main Street, Stratford, 203-375-8332, and online at StraffordSmile.com. 
In Pound Ridge since 1993, the Wine Connection is one of America's best wine shops. Visit our beautiful store for the greatest in wine and knowledgeable service. With wonderful values from around the world to collectibles for your cellar, we are your one-stop source. Visit our online shop at wineconn.com and make sure to sign up for email updates. With great offers, new arrivals, and special events, don't miss all the action at The Wine Connection, including tastings every weekend. The Wine Connection, located at 32 Westchester Avenue, Pound Ridge, New York. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. This has been a very creative entrepreneurial hour and I'm so thankful that Alex Giannini was in to talk to us about not only the Westport Library and the makerspace, but what it really takes to maybe juggle and be a full-time dedicated employee and with a passion on the side and doing a few Kickstarters. I hope you'll come back and let us know the results in the, in the new year as we go along. Well, I'd love to. But we need to talk about just a couple of things. Uh, you are going to start lending out some things. We are. We are, we are in a very uh, cool phase of the makerspace. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, my, my uh, my boss retired uh, in, in October okay. um, and our, our IMLS grant ran out last year so we're kind of changing uh, the way that we do things a little bit at the makerspace. Uh, things are becoming a lot more hands-on um, and uh, as I mentioned some of this stuff may seem like it's a higher level of entry. Uh, it's definitely not because we, we, we start from, from the ground up uh, and we, we, uh, we're starting to lend out some stuff. Such uh, as? Such as we have uh, some hero uh, GoPros, the GoPro Heroes. Mm -hmm. um, we've lent these out to patrons in the past to kind of make their own movies. Um, we are also going to be lending out 3D printers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're these little cube 3D printers. But that's for coaches to start. To start, it'll be for makerspace coaches. So um, be a coach and yeah, be in so service to come others. Come volunteer, and spread your please. Knowledge. Yep, and um, which is pretty cool because they'll, they'll be able to, to take a printer home. They'll get it for 14 days. They'll have their own spool of, uh, of plastic filament, uh, and they can they can print at home. Wow, that's incredible! And then tell us about the uh, Maker sure. Madness and the fair coming sure, up. Sure, yeah. So uh, the the big Maker Fair, the fifth annual Maker Fair, will be on uh, Saturday, April 30th. Uh, we're hoping it's our big. Well, we know it'll be our biggest one uh, yet. And, and uh, are there reservations needed? No, you, you at some point we'll open up online, and you can. It's free to attend. Um, you just you just print out a ticket and, and mm -hmm. you can you can come um, but kind of leading up to that we're, we're trying to do some really cool things um, the we have something this will be the second annual maker madness event on Saturday March 12th at the Westport library it is a an overnight lock-in uh, and it's 12 hours of making madness really um, we have a bunch of different programs for uh, anyone it's all ages they can come in they can they, they can. gotta be there for 12 hours yeah if you, you it's uh, all or nothing it's all or nothing <laughs> yeah you're um, in or you're out so last year we did like a script to film where the uh, a group of 20 actually wrote a script a movie script and then filmed it over the course of the night uh, this year our, our big event uh, and it'll lead into the Maker Fair in April uh, a sculptor who uh, who works with the library quite a bit his name is Chris Crow he's done lots of uh, uh, programs at the library he will be constructing a 30-foot dragon puppet that wow. you'll be able to actually get in and, and control and, and move around uh, and we, we plan to unveil that at the Maker Fair in April um, but at Maker Madness um, we're, we're one of the big events that you'll be able to help him build uh, the dragon uh, and the dragon itself is our first big community making project. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope to kick it off in mid-February mm -hmm. um, and Chris will be at the library as a maker in residence um, and he'll be working pretty much every day and people can just, if they come into the library, they pass by him and hey, if they want to pick up a hammer and help him, mm -hmm. they can. I think the Westport Library is an incredible resource, and I'm so appreciative of your time. Thank you so much, Alex, for Thank coming you so in, much. Yes. and we hope that you'll come back. Absolutely. Uh, the Westport Library, as well as all of our other libraries in the community, are special, special places. So I encourage you not only to look at the Westport Library, but the library in your community and become part of it. And I encourage you, if you're interested in being a guest or you know someone that would be a great guest, get in touch with us. It's the drive. Many hands make light work as we move forward with your mind, body, spirit, and the lifestyle you live. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next Tuesday.